The question about the daughters is, of course, why? You know, like, we understand sort of why the wife, you know, yes, divorce, but spouses kill their other spouse sometimes. Why? Why the daughters? The only one that's really going to know that is Chris. And wouldn't you love to have the opportunity to ask him and with the hope that he would be candid and truthful with you? So the only thing that we say in cases like this is we have to look at the behavior. These little girls were not a threat to him. These little girls were not going to be um, um, dangerous, but he killed them anyway. And he killed them by looking in their eyes and smothering them. And then that's not even enough. Then he takes them into the these oil containers and, and then drops them in. He basically wants to destroy them as though they never existed. So think about that. He wanted them as though they never existed. He that tells me, if I were talking to him, Chris, you didn't never want you never wanted to be a dad. You never wanted those responsibilities. You didn't want a life like the one that you had. And is it true that you felt once you could get rid of every memory of those girls and who they were, you could get back some control of a life that you wanted. That may be the approach I would take with them because he was trying to destroy them physically, take their life away. And that's the way to do it. That's what he did. Mm, Yeah, that's interesting. So the discarding, the way in which he discarded the daughter's bodies, which is one of the most gruesome parts of the story, dropping them in these neighboring oil tanks talking yeah. about how he could he could hear the splash when the bodies hit and that that told him how how much oil was in the, each tank not, not even together and not even in the same tank shoved them through this little hole i mean she's shoving his dead daughters it it's just it just shows you yeah the, the the level of callousness this is not this is not i snapped um you know i found out my wife was having an affair and i shot her not excusing that obviously this is something, this is just a whole mother level of evil and anger. And you're saying, same as we we interviewed another great, great expert who is also saying he, do, he, he doesn't look like a psychopath. <laughs> and that's, that's what's most terrifying. So it's hatred. It's loathing of the life that you're in. And we may not have a bunch of red flags other than maybe he doesn't express his anger. Um, maybe he's got controlling behaviors possibly domestic violence that you may or may not know about. God, that's not much to go on. No, not as observers from the inside, outside looking in. But if Shanann were here with us today, uh, we'd certainly want to ask her questions about that some of that behavior that kind of evolved over the years that they were married it seems pretty clear to me that he saw Shanann as the enemy. She was the cause for his being miserable. She was the cause for his feeling trapped. He, She was the cause for um, how he viewed life. Is it true? Of course not. I mean, he's an adult male. But the way he viewed it is, is I think that that component, you know, had to be there. And those children were anchors around his neck. In order to move forward, he had to start over again. I remember you, I had cases where um, the the spouse would take the other spouse up to um, uh, like to a, a mountainside and, and then they would push the spouse over. And those were really hard cases to, to really investigate. But as you begin to unravel that, and it was different from this, but still some of the components are the same. As you begin to unravel it, you see the same kind of emotional changing. They started to live their life over again. They started a new life. They no longer were married to this person. They no longer were in a relationship. So mentally, they checked out months before they murdered their spouse. And so the murder was almost anticlimactic because they needed to get rid of the person that made their life miserable. They needed to be gone, completely, absolutely gone, not divorced, not live in another city. They needed to be gone. Erased, right? So he um, winds up pleading guilty. They, I mean, of course, they had him, and that spared his life. He was given um, five life sentences. And even the judge, uh, Marcelo Kopkow, was 
absolutely horrified by the circumstances of this case. I mean, I, I know a lot of judges, been in front of a lot of judges over the course of my life. It's very rare that they offer this strong a personal opinion on a case. But here's just a little bit of the judge during the sentencing hearing, November 19th, 2018. I've been a judicial officer now for starting my 17th year, and I um, could objectively say that this is perhaps the most uh, inhumane and vicious crime that I have handled out of the thousands of cases that I have seen, and nothing less than a maximum sentence um, would be appropriate, and anything less than the maximum sentence would depreciate the seriousness of this offense. You know, usually we have the death penalty in part because we want to deter. You know, we want to punish. But we also want to deter other criminals. Does does this sentence fit the crime? And do you think it effectively deters the next Chris Watts? Um, in my opinion, it fits the crime. Do I think it will deter someone else from doing this again? No, I don't. Um, I don't see that happening. But in a case like this, I always think about that when a person gets a sentence like this, sitting in prison, you're a young man still, you are in prison for the rest of your life. You're never going anywhere. I mean, that is a profoundly um, negative, uh, profoundly impactful sentence. And um, and the, certainly the judge thought it was consistent with um, the incredible damage that he did. But um Will it? Will somebody else stop and think about Chris Watts if the right set of circumstances exists for them tomorrow? Will they think about Chris Watts and say to themselves, I better not do this? And I would say to you, I don't think so. Junk science. That's what the doctor called many of those fruit and vegetable supplements on the market. Junk science because they use extracts of common produce department fruits and vegetables with few health benefits. But I want to tell you about Field of Greens. Field of Greens is different. They use the whole organic fruit and vegetable, not a watered-down supplement. And it's backed by a better health promise, which I'm going to tell you about. Each ingredient in Field of Greens was scientifically chosen to support vital organs like heart, lungs, and kidney health. Others support your immune system, blood pressure, metabolism, and healthy weight loss. Their better health promise is simple. The next time you are at the doctor for a checkup, if the doctor doesn't say you're looking healthier than before, you're going to get your money back. How about that? That's a deal. So let me get you started with 15% off. Visit fieldofgreens.com and use my promo code MK. Promo code MK at fieldofgreens.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.